Hey everyone, my name is Andy, I'm a Salesforce admin, and in this video I'm going to be talking about deployments using Salesforce CLI. So what is Salesforce CLI? It's a tool that you can use with VS Code um, to allow you to deploy changes from one org to another, so maybe a sandbox to a sandbox or sandbox to production. Um, it's much more, it's very powerful, a lot more powerful than uh, change sets. I like this tool a lot, and it can be a little bit intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, um, you can see that there's a lot you can do with it, um, and it's pretty nice. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to download Salesforce CLI. I'll have this link in the description. Then you're going to download VS Code as well. Then once you download those, you're going to open up VS Code, and you're going to choose Extensions, and you're going to choose and type in Salesforce Extension Pack. Okay, and you're going to download <clears throat> this full pack of all nine items. You don't want to download one item at a time. It'll basically tell you don't, right? Use the, uh, do the extension pack instead. So once you've installed the extension pack, um, you're going to want to close out VS Code, reset it, and then open it up again, right? Sometimes you get weird errors. Um, a couple times we're going to close and reopen just to kind of restart VS Code to avoid some um, unnecessary errors. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a new project. So to do that, I'm going to click Command Shift P or Control Shift P and type in SFDX. It's going to say Create Project with Manifest. And basically what this is going to be is sort of like a file structure that's going to hold all of our um, data that we're going to be moving from one org to another, right? It's also going to allow us to authorize orgs and pull metadata from different orgs. So you'll see all these things in a minute. Okay, so we're going to choose a template. I'm just going to choose Standard. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it demo deployment. Okay. I'm going to save it in this folder. Okay. So now we have our project, right? And we have a bunch of files here, but the one file that we're going to be focusing on the most is going to be this force app file. Okay. And here is where uh, a lot of the data is going to be stored that we can use to, it's going to be sort of like a repository of changes that we can move from org to org. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to authorize our first org. So at the bottom, it'll say no default org set. Click on that. Choose authorize. Okay, so just note production or sandbox, okay, which one you want to do. So if it's like a QA environment, you want to make sure you choose sandbox or if it's your production environment. Um, because I'm using the, cell, the trailhead orgs, it's going to be a, a production environment. So I'll click on this. I'll give it a name like org1. Then it's going to open a new tab in my browser and ask for my credentials. Okay, so I'm just going to hop over here. I just kind of copied that there for easy use and then my password. Okay, now I've already authorized this to test it earlier, but what will happen is you'll get a pop-up that'll just ask you to allow or deny Salesforce CLI. You'll click allow and then you're in. Okay, so it's authorized. So I'm going to go to my VS Code and we can see the org is there, right? Now, if I go to the org browser and I give it a refresh, okay, this is going to be all the metadata in this org, right? Flows, workflow rules, permission sets, profiles. This is everything that's inside this org, and we'll be able to pull it out of here and add it to our file explorer to deploy, okay? But I'll show you that in a minute. So let's authorize our second org. So maybe this was our sandbox, and we're going to push to production. So I'm going to click again, and I'm going to choose Authorize an Org again um, because I'm using another uh, Trailhead Sandbox or Trailhead Org. It's going to be Production. Okay, Org 2, I'll call it. You can call it whatever you want. So I'm just going to grab this here. Okay, so now my second org is authorized. Again, that pop-up would have showed asking if I want to allow or deny Salesforce CLI. And I clicked allow. Okay. So now we have both orgs, right? We have access to all the data in both of them. So let's say we create a new uh, custom object in our first org. Okay. Maybe our sandbox. Okay. So maybe we'll call it deployment test. Okay. 
everything looks good. We'll save. Okay, and then we're gonna create a custom field. Maybe we'll call this just something simple. Make it like a text field. And we'll just call this, say field test. All right. Okay, next. Save. Okay. So we have an, a custom field and a custom object. So now we want to push this to production. So I'm going to go to VS Code. I'm going to change back to org1. I'm going to open my org browser. Okay. I'm just going to give it a good refresh. Okay. And I'm going to look for the naming conventions. Conventions are kind of different. So instead of object, you're going to look for custom objects, right? Um, instead of lightning record pages, you're looking for flexi pages. So you'll kind of get used to the naming of everything um, in time. So custom objects. Okay. I'm just going to scroll down. Of course, it's not all custom objects, right? It has all objects. So, but we're going to look for our custom object, which is this guy, deployment test, right? And as you can see, it's going to have everything, right? The object and all the fields, as well as our custom field. So I'm just going to hit this button right here, this little cloud with an arrow, and it's going to be retrieve source from org. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to pull that data in from org one. So we'll wait a second. It's retrieving. Okay, everything was good. We can see down here at the bottom in our output, right? Custom field and a custom object. So I'm gonna hop back over here and I'm gonna refresh this. And then we can see under objects, right? We have our custom object that we created. Okay, this is the deployment test. And this is the metadata. Right? This is kind of what, this is the behind the scenes of this object, okay? And then if I open up fields, I can see the new custom field. So what makes this tool so powerful is, you know, you can make adjustments to the metadata as you're deploying it, right? If I wanted to change the length to 200, or maybe I wanted to make this required, right? I could make these changes directly, um, in VS Code and then make these deployments, right? So I like it. It's nice to be able to kind of see everything that you're moving and get a kind of a good overall picture of all the items um, instead of just being blanketed behind check boxes and click this and click that, right? Okay, so now we want to deploy this new object in this new field to our other org. So I'm going to change to org two. Okay, we see here that the org browser changes, but our repo, right, our file explorer, it stays the same. So this, it still has these fields. So all I have to do is I'm just gonna right click on objects, okay? And you can be specific, right? I could right click on field, I could right click on this object, but because this whole folder is containing both the custom field and the custom object, I'm gonna click the whole folder. And I'm going to choose this option, deploy source to org. And this is going to deploy this new uh, change to our to the second org, right? The new object and the new field. So I click deploy source to org. Okay, we see. There you go. Deployment successful. Okay, if we had thrown an error, it would have shown us in our output section, right? And we would have been able to kind of look. And, and the errors are fairly descriptive, so maybe it would have been like, you know, needs to have this, or you must, you're missing an item or something. Um, so they're, they're generally fairly helpful. Okay. So I'm going to go to org two. I'm going to go to setup object manager. And there it is. I just moved one item, two items rather, right? There's field tests. So I've just moved the object and the new custom field from org one to org two. And that's it. It's very simple um, overall, right? Again, because it's VS Code, I think it can be kind of intimidating, but you can just make all the changes you want and just go over to the org browsers and just start picking things out and moving them from org to org.
and that's it. That's using that's doing deployments using Salesforce CLI. Thanks for watching.